الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبا القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء أما بعد respected scholars, elders, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First and foremost we'd like to send our heartfelt congratulations to the maqam of our Imam, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa zaman on this auspicious occasion which we celebrate the birth anniversary of Sayyidah Ma'asuma and we gather tonight to remember her name and to remember the Ahlul Bayt so I've taken up tonight's particular topic to look at the essence of particular females in Islam in light of the person that we celebrate tonight and to look at them from a different angle to look at them tonight, inshallah, I want to look at Sayyidah Fatima, alayha afdhul salati wa salam. I want to look at Sayyidah Zainab, alayha afdhul salati wa salam. When we look at them, however, we want to analyze tonight, inshallah, why is it and what makes them great? Because on one instance, when you come forth, and anyone comes forth and asks us, as the followers of the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt, the followers of the family of the Prophet of Islam, the Prophet and his family, when someone comes forth and asks us, why is Fatima Zahra great? And that's a question we're going to be asked time and time again. What makes Fatima Zahra great? What makes Sayyidah Zainab great? Inshallah tonight, the basis of tonight's argument, inshallah, we would like to look at Sayyidah Zainab in this light. Someone may come forth and when they take the example of Fatima Zahra, someone may come forth with a reply that, you know what, she's the daughter of the Prophet of Islam. She's the daughter of the Prophet of Islam. Now without a shadow of doubt, that in itself gives her a great status. That in itself gives her a position within Islam. Gives her a position within even jurisprudence. As in what she says. Because she's the daughter of the Prophet of Islam. It gives her a status nonetheless. However, is that what makes Fatima Zahra great? Is that the instance of what makes Fatima Zahra great? Is it because Fatima al-Zahra is the mother of all the Imams? Is it because Ali ibn Abi Talib is Fatima al-Zahra's husband? Is that what makes Fatima al-Zahra? As in the same instance, we can take the example of Sayyidah Zainab. When we look at Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, do we say that she's great because she is the daughter of Fatima al-Zahra and Ali ibn Abi Talib? Is she great because she's the sister of two Imams? Is she great because she used the tragedy of Karbala to instill what we have today in the remains of the religion of Islam? She upheld it with her stances within Kufa and Sham. Why is it? What makes them who they are? That's what we want to take from tonight's topic. Is it great because of the position that they hold? As in, is it great because of their lineage? Is it great because of who married them and what their offsprings are? Or is it because of their essence? When we look at Sayyidah Zainab, we look, yes. When we look at Sayyidah Zainab, people often overlook the massive, massive thing that the parents have. The massive influence that the parents have of their, over their children. Yes, it has an instance that what? That Ali ibn Abi Talib has taught Sayyidah Zainab. She looks towards her father for strength for bravery, for courage, for patience after the Prophet of Islam. She looks towards her mother in the same instances. Yes, it's great that she's learned from them. However, how many a time do we know of people from great ancestral backgrounds that have went astray? And on the reverse angle, how many people do we know from a very bad ancestral background? However, they turned out great people. I'll give you an example. The first example we have to look at is obviously, and I'm not saying they become great people, but I'm saying they're not going to follow in the same footsteps as their parents. Let's take Muawiyah, the son of Yazid. Muawiyah, son of Yazid, when he takes the Khilafah after his father, he's looking at it and he says, you know what, I don't want this Khilafah. This isn't rightfully mine. This Khilafah isn't rightfully my father's or my forefathers. Therefore, you see the danger, what, the, what happened? He wanted to give it back towards Ahlul Bayt. 
And then the calamity happened. However, we see what? He didn't follow in the same footsteps as his father. Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr. Who was he? One of the disciples of Ali ibn Abi Talib. As in he was sought out throughout the land after the, after the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib because he was a companion. Until the time of Muawiyah he was butchered. As in what we look at the example is it doesn't matter that their parents were great. Did they turn out great? And that's why we have to look at Sayyidah Zainab. Not only was her father Ali ibn Abi Talib, she was the sister of two Imams. Her mother was Fatima to Zahra and her grandfather was the man that brought us the message of Islam. But let's look at Sayyidah Zainab as an example from when she was little until she grew up. What examples can we take from her life? At the age of four to five, when Fatima, this is the first glimpse of the greatness of Sayyidah Zainab. When she was four or five years of age, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra goes up and says that amazing speech which it's known as the speech of Fatima. Another term used for that particular speech is the speech of Fadak, if you want to research it. And Imam Sahib Asli was Zaman, he says what? He says that as a mu'min and a follower, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He says as a mu'min and a follower of Ahl al-Bayt, you have to make sure that this speech is one that you must read and undertake and learn from because of the examples she gives because of what's withheld within that particular speech and what we need to learn from it Sayyidah Zainab, look at the greatness of Sayyidah Zainab at that young age at that young age she's one of the narrators of hadith of that massive speech if you go out now and read it or if you listen to it on an audio tune we find that it may take tw up to 20-25 minutes. Such a long speech. I looked at it and I tried to memorize it. I tried to memorize it. It's a speech that's very hard to memorize. Sayyidah Zainab, once she hears it from Fatima al-Zahra, alayha salatu was salam, and she's learning. She's learned it and she gives it and she teaches it. As in one of the narratives of hadith is, is Sayyidah Zainab at such a young age. Another example we can take from Sayyidah Zainab, at a young age, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he takes her one day, young age, he begins to teach her, as all fathers teach their children. He's teaching her numerically, the numbers. She says, he says to Sayyidah Zainab, say one. So Sayyidah Zainab says one. He says, Zainab say two. And Sayyidah Zainab wouldn't say two. He looks at her again and says, Zainab say two. Look at the reply of this woman. And at that young age, you'll begin to realize what greatness she grew up to become. What greatness and what stances she took in the 10th of Muharram and the aftermath of Karbala that had a pivotal position in changing the course of history. A pivotal position in which upholding the message of Islam. The message that her brother died for. That he was martyred, that her family was butchered for. And we'll begin to realize what kind of stance and what kind of knowledge this woman had, which made her great. She says to Ali ibn Abi Talib, she says, This tongue that's uttered the oneness of God cannot bear to utter a number other than one. Sallu ala Muhammad. That's Sayyidah Zainab at such a young age. And you begin to realize, this is just Sayyidah Zainab at a, at, a, at a young, young age. Imagine what she became when she grew up, when she began to teach Quran within her household. Imam Ali, alayhi afdala salati was salam, when he shows us the protection he had for Sayyidah Zainab, the protection he had, we begin to analyze that, you know what? There will become a time when Sayyidah Zainab People would not know anything of her. As in when Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. When we come to the courtroom of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, there's a particular speech that takes place between them, between Sayyidah Zainab, and between Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. As in, the gist of it is what? On one side, he says, are you Zainab? As in, they didn't know what Sayyidah Zainab looked like. Imam Ali, even in Kufa, when he was in Khilafah, Imam Ali, people would come towards him and they would beg him. He says, it's Eid. You're the Khalifa of our time. We want our woman, not us. 
We want our woman to go towards Sayyidah Zainab. We want our woman to go and celebrate with Sayyidah Zainab. As in nowadays, everyone goes towards other people's houses and says, you know what, Eid Mubarak, let's celebrate together. Mom Ali, they're asking for permission to go, oh Ali, let us go towards Sayyidah Zainab. Let us have a celebration. Let's give her the celebration of this auspicious occasion. What does Imam Ali salam say? What does Imam Ali say? He says, no, why? He says, I'm afraid. Why are you afraid? Just going to send their eight celebrations. What is there to be afraid of? He says, I'm afraid that the woman may see the characteristics of Sayyidah Zainab. And when they're in circles, they'll begin to utter her characteristics. That I will not have. As in, what do we know when Sayyidah Zainab wants to go out and visit the graves of the Prophet of Islam and her mother Fatima? Who gives us the example of this? Not a narration from any normal person or the Sahaba or anyone like that. No. One of the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. He says to Sayyidah Zainab, what do we mention before? In the courtroom of Kufa, he says to Sayyidah Zainab, You are Zainab. He says, you are Zainab, the one that Ali ibn Abi Talib in the night. Look at the example given. He says, in the night, he takes with him what we look at nowadays as a lamp or a candle. He says, in the night when he takes the candle with him and he goes in front of you and you have three brothers surrounding you, one on either side and one behind you. Even in the night, he turns off that flame. Why? He says, I cannot bear to see, to let people see the shadow of Sayyidah Zainab. Who says this? Who is he? The enemy of Ahlul Bayt. He says, you are Zainab, the one that Ali ibn Abi Talib used to extinguish the light within the candle or lantern so people did not see your shadow. You are that Zainab. That's how he refers to her. That's why we look at the examples. Even... Not in just a, f a female perspective, even in a male perspective. There is greatness, yes. When we look at the ancestrals, that the genes, that do play a massive role. That's why the Prophet of Islam, when it comes towards marriage, he says, make sure you know your spouses. He says, because genealogy is a very interesting thing to look at. Because in some genes, there may be a gene that which is unfavorable. When you look towards the genetics, when you look at who these people are, make sure that the background is what? Is that of God-fearing nature. When Ali ibn Talib gives us an example, when he goes towards his brother Aqil that knew the genealogies at the time, he says to him, Oh Aqil, he says, I want a woman that will bring for me a son that will defend my son Hussein on the 10th. Find me a spouse. Because what? Even then, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he knows that genealogy has a massive part to play in the upbringing of a child, the essence of a child. As in, in the battle of Safin, when the arrows were pouring down like rain, and he gives the, the flag towards one of his sons by the name of Muhammad ibn Hanafiyyah. He says, go out and bring us victory. Or go out and break the ranks. He goes out, he sees the arrows flying like rain. He goes back to Ali ibn Talib. He says, I can't. I fear. I have fear in my heart. He says, go out again. He goes and he comes back. He takes the flag off him. He says, what's, what's happened? He says, you have a gene from your mother. He says, the sons of Ali and Fatima don't have that gene of fear. He gives the flag to Imam Hassan alayhi salam and he goes out. Without a glimpse of fear. Glim without a glimpse of fear. And he goes and breaks the ranks. Giving us the example that what? Yes, on the first instance, genealogy plays a massive part. When you choose, and the Prophet says, It tells you then and there. However, when we look at Sayyidah Zainab, yes, she has all that characteristics. She has the grandparents. She has the parents. She has the brothers. But when we look at her greatness, is when all that is taken away. When all that, when she is left on the plains of Karbala without a grandfather, the mercy that brought the message, without the father in which people used to look at him, not just, just, just look at him, used to fear his name and tremble when they hear his name, which was looked at as a source of guidance, a source of power, a source of backbone, 
a source of bravery, courage, patience. He wasn't there on the 10th of Muharram. Her mother Fatima died at a young age. Flower that barely blossomed. Taken away. Ali ibn Talib refers to it says what? It says Fatima came from heaven. And she left her fragrance in my mind. And she's gone back towards heaven. Fatima Zahra wasn't there. Imam Hassan was taken away. Imam Hussein was butchered in front of her. And all the family members. Therefore, we want to look at Sayyidah Zainab on that instance. What did Sayyidah Zainab do in that stance? Where can we see the greatest aspect of Sayyidah Zainab? And there's many great aspects to look at. But it's that position when no one else is around. When there's no one to have as a backbone. Or tie your belt to. What does she do in that instance? And that's what we have to look at in this instance. To see what is Sayyidah Zainab. How great is this woman? Is when she goes on the plains of Karbala. And after, as we know, Imam Hussein, after every martyrdom, he takes that martyr and he offers him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as sacrifice. Even his six month old, when the blood drips from his neck, he gathers the blood from under his neck and he throws it towards the sky. And he says, God, take until you are sufficed. Say, so Zainab, what is in this instance after everyone's butchered? She goes in the night between the bodies that lie on the plains of Karbala. And you want to imagine this, brothers, a sister that grew up every day in the morning to the light of the face of Imam Hussein, not any normal person, to the face of Imam Hussein, in which we have narrations, and I stated a few, na a few weeks ago that the narration states that we have that Imam Hussein's face will illuminate paradise, that people will forget there's something called Hur al-Ain. That's the face of Imam Hussein alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Sayyidah Zainab, imagine waking up to that face. For her whole life. And on the 10th of Muharram, when she sees his head on a spear. When she goes on the, on the plains of Karbala, trying to, imagine trying to find your brother's body. Without a head. That's been trampled on by the horses. And after people have come forth and taken every single garment and ripped off a finger from him. To take that particular ring that he had. Imagine what state Imam Hussein's body was in. And for Sayyidah Zainab to go on the plains of Karbala and hold Imam Hussein and offer him and raise him and say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, she says to Allah, look at the powerful nature of this woman. And look, and this is what we can look at when in Kufa, we know that when Sayyidah Zainab was to speak, people said it's the essence, it's the aura of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Who is this great woman? She lifts on the 10th of Muharram. After the calamity of the 10th of Muharram, lifts the body or was left of the body of Abu Abdullah. And she says to Allah, look at this sentence. She says, please accept from us this little sacrifice. Sayyidah Zainab. This is why we look at Sayyidah Zainab now. And the example is what? Is that who people look at from the ancestry? When we celebrate Sayyidah Ma'asumah tonight, we don't celebrate her because she's a woman that you know, has a brother that's an imam, a nephew that's an imam. We don't celebrate her because of that. It's, just, it's because of the woman that she is. It's because the greatness, and we know she has a great rank within the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when people go or mention her name. In the nidr, or they pray to Allah through her means. And everything is accepted. When Allah grants you that which you wish, that's all aside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated her name. That in itself should say it by itself. And the reference point that we had tonight is Sayyidah Zainab. The reference point that we had from tonight is to look at a person. For who they are. To look at a person and their greatness, their attributes, what they've done for the religion of Islam. What stances they've taken and what examples we can learn. Not just look at them as an ancestral basis. As in this was his father. He must be great. This was his mother. He must be, she must be great. No. 
Yet, yes, it does have a major influence, yes. But on the flip side, what do we know about that particular person? And that's what we have to ask ourselves about Fatima al-Zahra. How many stories do we know about Fatima al-Zahra? How many do we know about Fatima al-Zahra as hijab? How many do we know about Sayyidah say Fatima's patience? How was Sayyidah Fatima a great wife, a great mother, a great daughter? A mother being in itself. If the Prophet of Islam says that she is the mother of her father, imagine what kind of mother she was to her children. When we decipher such examples, when we want to dissect these kind of people, when we want to look into their lives, this is what we need to hold on to. When we open the chapters to learn from these particular people, when we look at their stories, we don't just flip the page, no. We want to see how much we've applied to our lives and how far we are from this religion. We say that we're Muslim, yes. We say we're the followers of Ahl al-Bayt. How much of the Ahl al-Bayt's teachings do we apply? How much is Imam Sahib al-Asri was Zaman looking at us and saying, you know what, we've actually learned from the Ahl al-Bayt and are applying. And I tell myself first and foremost, because on, we're, we're all together on this one massive boat, wanting to clench onto the rope of salvation, which, which is the rope of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Inshallah, my time tonight has come to a close, and I thank everyone for listening to this particular lecture, inshallah. And inshallah, we can learn to look at the lives of these infallibles, to look at the lives of these great, great characters in history, and try to learn from it. Not just because they're females that we mentioned tonight. Because all of us, we have mothers, we have sisters, we have daughters. Let's try to be an influential factor in their lives by applying first and foremost to ours. Learning in order for us to teach. And I end on this note, brothers and sisters, and I just want to bless, inshallah, the majlis with everyone reciting a surah al-mubarakat al-fatiha. But before it, allowed salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.